now. All right. Welcome. This is part five. Um, it was an interesting setup, but I thought I'd have the camera already set up looking at this frame here that I'm going to be lashing to uh, the gunnels. <clears throat> this is part five, as I just said. Uh, what I've done is I've lashed all of the frames. So I'll take the computer out later and have the uh, camera on all the different frames. I've lashed the frames to all of the gunnels, well, to the two gunnels, um, because what I've done first is uh, I've attached the gunnels to the uh, bow stem. So now what uh, I thought I'd finish, but uh, I didn't know how long it would take, so I didn't film the entire part. It took a, a, a quite a while to lash them all together. So what I'll do now is I'll just lash the last frame. This is frame seven to the last gunnel. And then I'll show um, what the next step would be to get the gunnels attached to the stern stem. Uh, as always, if you have any questions, please uh, just type them into the chat and I can see them and reply back, type back, uh, whatever it is. But all right. so. As before, when I was lashing uh, the stems, I'm using artificial sinew, and it's I'm I'm very very surprised at how strong this really is. Uh, I'm using about an arm's length, so, I mean um, wingspan, so it's about six feet worth of the sinew for every time I lash. Once again, I wanted to thank uh, Katsu from uh, Katsu Crafts uh, for his absolutely superb tutorial on how to lash. And I've been taping up my fingers because actually, uh, after doing a couple of lashes, you really start to feel it. So the way I'm starting it is I'm doing a stopper knot, a figure eight knot at the end, or I'm leaving a little bit of space. What I'm then doing is doing a regular knot to hold it in place and get uh, my lashing going. I still haven't figured out what I'm going to do about music. Uh, I haven't really had the time to look into it. I still think it's a very interesting topic. But I'm sure at some point I'll have something. Or maybe I'll be done with the boat before I even figure it out. Um, so I'm in New York, and it's been extremely, extremely cold. We were going to go out tomorrow, but we decided it might just be a little too chilly to make it out tomorrow. Where I think I'm just going to spend my time here working on the boat. So the way I set up all the frames going up and down the boat is I measured, um, first off I measured where they would sit on the keel and I would measure on one gunnel, get it into the right place, um, lash it down, then measure, compare across the way on the other side, starting from the, the stem and the bow so that I have to have identical numbers on either side so that the stems are even are in the right places as per the bow. Because it's, it's, it's very interesting how if before I attached the gunnels down by just moving the gunnel back and forth just a little bit it actually changed the uh, it changed completely the way the kayak sat. And if it's not perfectly straight, then I'm just going to make a craft that goes around in circles. So like I said before, this is about a wingspan. It's about six feet of sinew that I'm working with here. Now a lot of times these frames can be cut much sharper 
uh, in some cases so that you can go straight to there but because of the angle of the gunnel here I thought it'd be better to just make a hole and lash straight to the hole instead than pulling all the way out here I'd be wasting so much space if I had to go out here every single time I'm getting a lot more times around if I go straight out and like I said before if you have any questions please type them into the chat and I'll be able to see them in real time that's one of the exciting things about <clears throat> doing these things live is I get to chat with people like last time I was chatting with Danielle in Mexico while I was working on this stuff So now I've gone around a couple of times, two, three, on the next one I'm going to pull it tight by using a small dowel and I'm going to pull it tight two or three times before I tie it off at the end. I've now pulled enough of these and broke a couple uh, enough to know the kind of tension I need to put on it before it breaks. but how much tension to make it tight enough to make it a really good joint. So here I'm just attaching it to a brow. Making sure the frame's in the right place. And now when I pull on it, it's going to tighten the joint into place. And what's really nice is when it tightens it, it stays. I don't need to continuously there we go. that definitely tightens. I don't need to hold it in place it because it's waxed. It stays in place pretty damn well. So now I just continue going through the same thing. And it is quite tedious to do it, but what I like is now there's been two instances where I realized I wanted to change the location just slightly and because I did it with this if I want to make any changes all I have to do is cut it and do it over and if I did this with either screws or epoxy or both I wouldn't be able to redo it as easily. I know it's time consuming it was uh, every time I have to redo one of these it's a pain in the butt but it's really nice to know that all I'm losing is time and not having to deal with a mistake that I can't fix I could technically cut all of these up and redo them if I need to alright so I'm gonna tighten it again same thing So if anybody's wondering, this is a Dave Gentry uh, design from uh, Gentry Custom Boats. It's the Baffin Bay model. And if you want to see some really great tutorials on skin on frame building, CustomCrafts.com. Uh, he has some really wonderful video tutorials on how to do several of the steps if you wanted to work on building one of these guys. And I think maybe I should have just tied it off on that last one. I don't know if I'm going to have enough to pull. I'm going to give it a try. And if I don't have enough here, yeah, I'm going to go back one. See, this is one of the nice things about the sinew is I don't need to worry about keeping it super tight the entire time. It's 
So I'm going to just go back to this one. And tie it off. So the way I've been doing it, there's a nice way that uh, Katsu has of doing where he goes behind both of them and then tightens them together. But I've been having a little bit of trouble doing that. So what I've been doing is just coming behind, doing a regular hitcher's knot, and pulling back on it. And although that's probably not as tight as he's able to get his, I've been getting some really good results doing it this way. And I think when I have all of the different joints lashed up, it'll be strong enough. Sorry if I'm keeping my hand in the way. I'm just trying to... There we go. There's my hand in the way. Or... There you go, that's pretty good. So I'm going to go back and forth a couple of times with hitcher's knot. With, I believe that's what it's called, hitcher's knot. I'm just going under the lashing. back around and under and then pulling it tight and it really makes a wonderful joint look at that I don't know where you guys that are watching are based off of but here in New York it's been absolutely ridiculous the last couple of days today. And I know, I know if, if any of you guys are in Norway or places that are really cold, you'll have to excuse me because, you know, it's a lot colder for you guys. But um, for us, this winter has, has been pretty mild. And now the last couple of days have been in Fahrenheit and the negatives. Um, the wind chill has been absolutely crazy and that means down here in the basement the heater has been going off and on, on and off non-stop so you'll hear that in the background quite a bit I usually turn it off while I'm doing this so that I don't have the noise going on but it's just too cold now to do that and like I said if you have any questions please definitely type them into the chat because then I can see them all right so I have both ends with a couple of hitches knots so in order to now finish it off I'm going to do um, a figure eight stopper knot on each one and then just cut them out so that's around behind and then comes back forward and goes through through the loop round behind make a second loop I don't know if I'm doing this in a way that the camera can see make a second loop and come back around and inside that first loop the purpose for that one is it causes enough friction that it just can't undo itself and then I push it all the way down so that it gets stuck right where that piece starts there I'm guessing it's too small to see but that knot there is not going to let this come undone so I'm going to do that for the other piece actually I'm going to do a couple more knots this one's nice and long One more, and then I'll do the stop or not. So 
So around, behind, come around again, and then through that first, there's the figure eight. Wait, there we go. Let's see if you can see it there. There's the figure eight. All right, and now I can cut these. So officially, frames two through seven are attached to the boat, to the gunnels. So now what I'll do is I'll pull the camera out so I can show the back stem and what's going to be next. Let's see how I can do this. Sorry, you'll have to do, uh, deal with this for just one second while I pull the camera out. Uh, there we go. And now I'll change the lighting. Okay, that should be better. So now, here we can see there's the rest of the frames. Here's seven, seven, six, five, four, three, and then two all the way in the front. One is not going to be on until the very end. Uh, everything else has to be attached. Oh, and I'll bring the camera over to show how I attached. So here we can see the bow stem. It's attached to the keel down here, and it's uh, the gunnels are attached to it as well. I haven't attached the chines, but they are ready to be shaped and attached to the forward stem. So what I need to do now is the same thing with the stern stem. The gunnels were made to 18 feet long. See how they protrude all the way back? This is the stern stem and right here at the tip I am at 17 feet 5 inches and just a little bit over. It should be 17 5 inches exactly but I'm just I believe I'm a quarter off. Um, and the gunnels are gonna have to be cut so that they follow this uh, stem line down and that way I can attach them. And then the chines down here will eventually go on there as well. I'm going to have to cut the chines probably around here so that they can be attached to the rear stem. So what I'm going to be doing now is doing some measuring and seeing where I'm going to cut uh, these guys here. And if you have any questions, please, by all means, type them into the chat. I'd be more than happy to answer or talk about what I'm doing. Uh, so let's see. If I go by the rear, I'm measuring right now from frame number seven down to frame number seven 
down the gunnel to where this probably should end. It's say 33 inches. Let's do that. Okay, I'll do the same thing on the other side. 33 inches from from the rear frame. But what I'm going to do as well is I'm going to set up I'm going to set up the measuring tape all the way at the tip the front of the boat and pull it back to make sure that So what I did is I set up the tape, I attached it with a very tiny clamp to the tip of the bow, and that way I can have identical marks where I'm going to cut. You see I'm at 17 feet, 17 feet, 5 and a half, but once this comes up a little bit. I'd say five and a quarter, 17 feet, five inches and a quarter or so. So this way, if I'm measuring right from the tip, I should be able to get an exact measurement on both sides. So here I'm getting 203 inches and a half. Let's see if I get 203 inches and a half here. No, I'm not getting 203. There we go. 203 inches and a half. Getting less than that. 203 and a quarter. 203 and a quarter. Actually, the marks I have are correct. There we go. 203 and a quarter, 203 and a quarter. 203 and a quarter. 203 and a quarter. That's it. Okay, so now I have my length. So I'm going to cut these guys. So what I'll do is I'll cut these guys here. And then I'll be able to shape them uh, and attach them to the stern stem over here. Alright, so that's almost half an hour for this part. I think I'll call it there. It's a bit cold. I think I'll do some cutting and then... Um, I'll jump on to the next part. But uh, thank you for joining me. Thank you for uh, hanging out with me. 
Uh, if you have any questions, shoot me a message at any point uh, or an email at contact at kaihipster.com. I'll see you next time.